My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Best Quality Vacuum, the duck feed show about the Vince Gilligan universe of Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. And the end times are here, baby. Mm -hmm. The penultimate times. Yeah. Dramatic name. (laughs) Uh, A less dramatic a name and also one that nobody uses correctly. Except you, just there. Just it, just me and you while hearing it. Uh, yeah. Quick apologies, still in my new house. Uh, they are remodeling the house next to me, so if any, you know, Ryan, if that's coming through, that kind of growling machine that's yeah. going on, that isn't the entity. Um, <laughs> don't worry about the entity. It's, uh, <laughs> that's actually uh, equipment and people fixing a house. Yeah. Uh, be honest, Gary. That's not only the entity. It's not just the entity. Yeah, the entity adds a soupçon of, yeah. uh, of menace to this whole thing. Yeah, um, yeah, but it's nothing compared to the creature. So yeah, between the so, two, sound, oh. yeah, sounds like somebody's running a leaf blower or some kind of saw. It is a saw. I don't think it's the saws all that was much louder. This is the saw sum mm. uh, that they like to use. Okay, uh, here and I thought they were done with this part, but it turns out like completely gutting a house and rebuilding it. There's a lot of steps. Yeah, um, yeah. they started this well before we moved in. I, I really thought this would be done, but mm-hmm. naive yeah. on my part. Not exactly a six pack project. Yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, so this episode was written by Moira Wally Beckett and Thomas Schnauz and directed by Vince Gilligan. Uh, and it originally aired on October the 2nd of 2011. Yeah. And the uh, the first and one, there might be one other one later, but uh, at the very least the first episode that Vince Gilligan directs and doesn't write. Yes. Um, this episode basically takes place in real time. Um, mm-hmm. This picks up right after Crawl Space. Uh, yes. The DEA is putting Hank and his entire family under productive custody, uh, except for Walt, who refuses, mm-hmm. um, because Walt is thinks people are going to come kill him, mm-hmm. and wants to take this punishment on for himself. Yes, you know it is. Uh, you know he is suicide by Gus in the beginning of this episode <laughs> until he kind of realizes he can't do that and comes up with a plan. Yes, he has a little, uh, a little, a little chance-based eureka moment. Yes, uh, that gives him one of the most horrible ideas he ever has. Yeah, that that somehow works. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this is a Rube Goldberg machine of motivations mm-hmm. uh, and kind of chess stuff that's coming through. That is like undeniably cool and thrilling. The climax to season four of the show is good. Mm-hmm. It does stretch credulity a little bit. Yeah. Um, in terms of everyone having to react exactly the way that you know you guess they will. <laughs> Yeah. Um, kind of on both sides of this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the way they kind of accomplish this, and this, you know, first time I watched this, I don't know if, you know, speaking for you, uh, total surprise. Yeah. Everything that happened did not expect any of it. Um, the way they kind of keep you in the dark with that is that characters are constantly checking in on Walt, but Walt is gone for most of the episode. Yes. Um, we constantly hear him not answering his phone. Mm-hmm. And we're like, what's going on behind that uh, Walter White picket fence? Like, what is, what is he doing <laughs> back there? Uh, we don't get to find out until next episode, really. Right. We see we we see a part of it uh, this yes. episode a little bit, but uh, most of the time, if we do get a check in on him, he's you know sitting by the pool or by a window, seemingly just waiting passively. Yeah, uh, to but die. Uh, there's there's a lot of action. Um, there's a lot of action that we do not see. Um, I, I like this decision quite a bit. Same. Um, yeah. just because there's not a doubling of effort. So this is the, this is the result of a time crunch. They shot this alongside, uh, the series finale, the next episode face off. Um, and for runtime and production cost reasons, um, they had to cut the scenes where Walt and Jesse kind of put together how their plan was going to operate, which I didn't need to see. Yep. Uh, it's fun. It's fun to watch those kind of things. because it's fun to watch a scheme. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but just getting the results and keeping us in the dark the same way that the other characters, like kind of almost shifting our POV, mm-hmm. you know, to, to the family uh, is is really smart. Yeah. This. There's there's a less smart with this being uh, shot at the same time as the next one. There's a less smart decision that happened. Mm-hmm. It's kind of an accident. We'll talk about that. And we get to kind of uh, one of the climactic scenes of this. Yes. Um, but yeah, and we start out with, uh, we have it in the notes as a cold open, and I refer to it as cold open. This is an extremely hot open. Yes. Uh, th- yeah. this, is, this, is, this is just uh, what happens before the credits. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're, you know, in the middle of the action, right? Uh, so we left Walt cackling. Uh, and mm-hmm. then kind of falling, co- falling catatonic in the crawl space. Uh, now um, things are in motion, right? Yes. The threat has been called into the DEA. Uh, Walt had arranged that 
uh, you know, for Saul to do that. Uh, and Walt and Skyler are packing things up for, you know, Junior, Skyler, and Holly to, to be taken over to Hex. Yep. Uh, the idea they're going to all hole up there. Um, and Walt drops his bombshell on Skyler. I'm not going. Right. Um, you're only in danger because of me. You don't know these people. I promise if I'm there, you're not safe. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Skyler, this is, uh, some genuineness, you yes. know, between, between the white, uh, couple here. Um, the, uh, Skyler is like, this doesn't matter. You just need to be safe. Like all of those things don't matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we need to keep you safe. And th- there's this great moment, you know, in terms of what this episode elides, she says, you know, there's gotta be another way. And he goes, there isn't, there was, but now there isn't. He doesn't say you sold our other way to Ted. <laughs> you know, I had a plan for this, you know, you did this without consulting me and it kind of messed things up. Yeah. You know, yeah. With that, that's not me litigating the rightness of Skyler's actions. Like it made sense, but mm-hmm. we just skipped that whole fight, whatever that, yes. you know, him cackling in the basement and her kind of guilt, mm-hmm. a whole lot of them talking happened yeah. in this and we skip it. We just get him resigned. There isn't, mm-hmm. there was, but now there isn't yes. uh, really good. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like that, that that misery is not heaped on top of the actual, um, pressing circumstances. It's practical. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's rare in fiction that somebody actually treats an emergency like an emergency basically ever, (laughs) um, drives me nuts. Um, here's, you know, at least, you know, say what you will about Walt. He is treating an emergency like an emergency. Yes. Um, and she asks, you know, when are you going to have this worked out? And there's a tragedy to this because she thinks it's going to work out. Walter yeah. says, oh, oh, Skyler. Yeah. You know, it's, and I, I think this is genuine. I think this is, mm-hmm. you know, from the heart. He says, like, you know, because of this, I made certain choices. I have to face those consequences. I've been living on borrowed time for a year mm-hmm. now. We cannot prolong the ele- inevitable. I'm going to do this. Basically, I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. Um, Gus is going to come kill me. I, the only thing I can do is hope to keep you safe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so like they go out to the car, you know, as, mm-hmm. uh, as they're getting loaded up and Walt puts on his happy face, you know, as mm-hmm. Academy Award performance here, um, you know, talking to Hank. I got a uh, car like, yeah, yeah, I got a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, trust me. They're right. Anyway, why would they think to go after me? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and then he just kind of like, just loves on his daughter for a little bit and yeah. it's time to There's go. A, similar to like a cold stone cream Marie. I have a bell whenever Holly shows up uh-huh. and I, and I ring it and I hoot and holler and do a little like jig around the house <laughs> because uh, when the they child were, was when, accounted for <laughs> the, the child, the MacGuffin <laughs> child has appeared. Um, Sarah watches him have this moment. It's very sweet, yeah. you know, and for a moment it seems like they're going to hug and they don't like they have this history, you know, I, again, yeah. like Walt and Jesse, like they do love each other. Yeah, you know it's what is love and and what it means gets perverted. It's in Walter yeah. Lamb a little bit. I I also read this as like they know that this is probably at this moment this is probably the last time they're going to see each other. Mm-hmm. Like you know that. Sorry, I almost got a little bit choked up there. When there is that moment with somebody, mm-hmm. right? Where it's like, okay, yeah, I I know this. Like that the, the, there's got to be a time that you walk away, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. like, so th- them not agonizing over it and just treating it, not treating this like it's a huge emergency because also that would give it away to that the would, DEA. Away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They have to look casual. They're, you know, they're dedicated to the masquerade. Yes. A little bit like this is really good. Yeah. Really rich. Uh, Walt goes to the backyard sitting by the pool and he keeps spinning his gun. Like he's mm-hmm. armed because he thinks someone's going to come kill him. He spins the gun at the table and it keeps pointing at him. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like this. He's just kind of idly thinking and he doesn't accept the result Uh of it you know like this if he's saying you know uh flipping the coin on the four corners or whatever right this is a parallel to that Mm -hmm. he's leaving something up to chance and then deciding not to yeah you know no just fucking kill yourself dude kill yourself (laughs) yourself. the gun says kill yourself until eventually he spins it and it points at a potted plant and you get to see the wheels turn it in his head yeah yeah now it's pretty clear you know oh what (laughs) <laughs> yes, but we don't know what that plant is or anything either. Yeah. Like, only in retrospect, right? Like, yes, it, they they didn't set this up. They didn't have well, like Junior. Don't go near that plant. Yeah, you, whatever yeah. you do, buddy, don't eat that. I know it <laughs> smells like breakfast, but it's not. Well, <laughs> 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 of the valley, but it famously, famously smells like pancakes. <laughs> it smells like egg. Don't eat it though. Uh, they didn't yeah. set this up. 
in any no, way. Like no. they could have, and it would have been really obnoxious and worse storytelling. <laughs> I, 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 I only bring this up because like all for the, for the week between these two episodes, mm-hmm. you know, like all anybody, like there were, there were people saying, Oh, that's Lily of the Valley. You know, that's probably, that's probably what happened here. And then just everybody just, just really pissily arguing with each other about it. Yeah, man, watching stuff in real time has sucked in that way. It, it's a, I don't, I've decided I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. You know, just kind of a general, maybe an X-Men 97 season two comes back. Uh-huh. Um, so he gets an idea and then we leave him for like a while. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we just, we don't get to see him develop this or think out loud or talk it through with anybody. I really love it. Mm-hmm. Um, we cut over to Hank and Marie's and junior, uh, is super pissed. Uh, he's pissed that dad didn't come and he blames his mom. Yes. You know, like how hard did you try? You know, and mm-hmm. this has been our, been a running theme. Yeah, um, but. Hank comes to comes to her defense, and where he goes, it's your problem too. You didn't make Steve mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he needs to be here. Yeah, there, there, there's a fun exchange in this where Hank is like, "I well, I couldn't force him to go because it's not Nazi Germany." And Marie goes, "Why does it always come down to? Yeah, <laughs> why does everybody always say that?" <laughs> <laughs> the nonstop thing Marie is hearing. Uh, <laughs> And Hank basically says, like, this is nobody's actually in danger. Like, this is I got too close to something. You know, I'm not on the job and I'm in a wheelchair. Like, I am not a threat. Why would this be happening? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, somebody doesn't like the way I've been spending my free time. And Junior goes minerals and he ignores this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would really on. like it if 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 <laughs> if the evil gem tour was the one who like <laughs> full plot and emotion. They could have done a real twist at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a just a huge quartz golem rises yeah. from beneath the sandias. Hank gives the uh, the back of the envelope version of his speculation about Poyos Hermanos and Madrigal. Uh, and Gomi's here, and they're kind of having a little argument about how implausible it is. And even yeah. you know, like then Junior says, this is a bit of a reach. And Skylar asks, "Well, are you you know is the DEA looking into this?" Yeah. And this additional pressure, you know, for like from outside people gets Gomi to relent on going to check the laundry. Um, yeah. And Hank goads him into going there without a warrant. A good old fashioned knock and talk. Um, mm-hmm. I love that Skylar is putting the pieces together here. Yeah. Like in the background, she's hearing, you know, the laundry and stuff. And she, like, I don't think that if you asked her, you were like, where does Walt work? She wouldn't necessarily mm-hmm. be like, oh, that laundry mat. Yeah. But, you know, she's getting there. Like you yeah. watch her kind of processing this and kind of putting the pieces together. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, then we get a nice little Gomi highlight scene because that doesn't yeah. happen. You know, it doesn't. Uh, Gomi gets to show up and succeed in a fast talk role on mm-hmm. uh, the manager uh, yeah. of the laundry. You know, he's like, hey, you know, this, this, I busted a cook. He's got a, a father who's a senator. You probably know which one. He's, <laughs> he the drugs weren't his. He just like, showed up from the laundry he's at. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, this is stupid. Senator's son, though, right? Um, mm-hmm. the guy's like, hi, you know, you can't do that. I gotta check with my boss. And he's like, Well, you know, we're gonna have to shut down for a day if we do that. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. me and my other my friend, we could just look real quick right now. Like mm-hmm. classic. I this is me cinema sensing. One of Mike's guys being like, Yeah, that's uh-huh. weird to me. Uh, yeah. in this, just because shutting down for the day, the mm-hmm. laundry would probably be better than. Then the yeah. whole operation, like the actual yes. money making part of Gus's whole thing being being yeah. busted. Or yeah. just, you know, risking this or anything like that. Like I just not that he wouldn't necessarily ultimately decide that. I could imagine Gus or Mike being like, let him do it. Mm-hmm. You know, but he didn't make a phone call. Yeah. Like uh, um, he he also made this call before he saw the other part of the search team, yeah, which is that, a canine. True. Yeah. Yep. With, you, know, you know, drug dog. Yeah. Can you tell me, can you tell him as well? You know, he has to get permission. <laughs> Uh, and the drug dog comes out, you know, he has to clear out his people anyway, and Gomi and the drug dog start, uh, sniffing and taking photos. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the dog doesn't point at any, any, anything, um, nope. you know, just, they just go around and taking pictures of the equipment and stuff to go back and, you know, look over for, for the boring blog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for for Gomi's laundry blog. Yeah, Industrial Laundries of the Southwest. What yeah, a terrible title for a blog, it. Gomi. What a horrible tumbler. <laughs> Gomi. <laughs> Gomi you fucked up. <laughs> um the camera kind of pans down to Jesse and Tyrus in the lab and you know Jesse shuts down the machines. Yeah. You know, and 
the call comes in. It's Gus calling for Jesse and fucking Tyrus. Yeah. Like, oh, he says, <laughs> Dick. it's it's for you. And then doesn't extend the phone. He makes Jesse come all the way over and grab yep. it from by his Reach head. Reach out like his neck. Yeah. <laughs> 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 fucking Tyrus. Uh, and Gus says, you know, do you know what's happening? Yeah, I have a pretty good guess. Your former partner did this. Yeah. Do you understand why this is a problem? Why this can't continue? Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, Jesse's you know thinks about it like he's like yeah this fucking sucks, but he's like I can't no you can't kill Mister White mm-hmm. I, I'm drawing a line in the sand if you do that there's going to be a problem so yeah. what are you going to do and then Gus turns around and says there will be an appropriate response and hangs up on him before he can ask a follow up <laughs> question <laughs> yeah uh, this uh, this attempt to wedge won't work yes yep yeah uh, the DEA leaves they didn't find anything Jesse starts up the machine we get a little time lapse here. Um, Jesse has to get dropped off in the middle of the desert to get in his car. Mm-hmm. Um, and he decides like, and this is fucked up, tries to check in with Walt, goes straight to voicemail. Yes. Uh, but he checks his messages and finds tons of voicemails from Saul. <laughs> yes, yeah. Hey client, yep. we probably need to talk soon. <laughs> yeah, get over here. You know? Yeah. 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 It goes there and, um, Huel frisks him. Uh, yep. The front door never happened before, uh, you know, could be plausibly written down to just the, 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 the panic that Saul's yeah. in, you know, like, oh, it can never be too safe these days. I didn't look at right? it twice when I first saw it, you know? No, no. Yeah. It's a bodyguard. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, things are volatile. Um, you know, and Saul is hunched over and pulling money out of the safe. <laughs> like he has been for two episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Non-stop, like stream of money. Yeah. Uh, he says the title, you know, end times are here, buddy. Yeah. You know, uh, Jesse asked what, you know, what's going on. He's like, Oh, you haven't talked to your partner recently. Have you? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, just, uh, I'm sure it's fine, but you're going to want your money. I'm out. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to disappear for a little while. I'm, I'm done with this whole thing. Uh, and Jesse, you know, he says, you know, you haven't talked to your partner thinks it's about the DA servant, uh, DA search. Yes. Which Saul doesn't know about. (laughs) Saul doesn't know about. And Saul goes, no, you know, uh, actually, you know, Walt, he said the whole thing about his family getting threatened. Uh And Jesse doesn't know about that. Right. uh, Here. When did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Jesse thinks that, uh, you know, him and Gus have an understanding. He's not going to move at all. Mm-hmm. You know, but the guest isn't going to play that game. Right. Uh, and this just, this is what reminded me of the episode that like, oh, last night was when he stopped by and got cattle prodded uh-huh. and stuff and taken out to the desert. Like that all just happened. Yes. You know, um, so mm-hmm. yeah, short, short amount of time here. Yeah. You know, uh, Saul asks Jesse to put in a good word with Gus, with Fring, for old time's sake, which is mm-hmm. fun because across both seasons, um, they, they they don't meet at one point. Yeah, they're they're in jokes, the same room yeah. with each other, but, no, they, but Saul doesn't meet. know who Gus is. That, not in this uh, the season. They meet. Uh, he goes to Lois Puyos Hermanos in um, Better Call Saul. He does, but it, it, he, he doesn't. He doesn't know that this is the guy. Is no, the he doesn't know this is the guy. But yeah, yeah he yeah. he does meet him because he helps him dig stuff out of the trash. Right. I, I, I don't know why that is. Like the I've only watched that series once. Mm-hmm. Um, I also love. There's a line here where uh, when Saul talks about why he's panicking, where he's like, "Yeah, they threatened his family, and who am I if I'm not family?" Uh, <laughs> love that. Um, yeah. You know, put in a good word for me. You know, I can't afford to, to butter the wrong bread here. Like he knows something's going on. He doesn't want to end up on the wrong side of it. He's got a he's got survival instinct, right? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, do a quick check in over at Hank's. You know, Skylar walks in. Hank is scrolling through the photos from the laundry, and you know, the plate the place was clean, right? Yep. And Skylar goes out. You know, tries to call Walt again. Gets to voicemail, and then just uh, you know goes goes to smoke out on the on, yep. out on the deck. Yep, the, the sniper. All I could think of was a hitman level where I had to take out all the Schraders. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you, you do not light do not light two yeah. cigarettes off the same match, Skyler. No, yeah, you don't do that. Uh, you can spot a cherry from good sniper can spot a cherry from a while, mile away. Um, so Jesse's at home. He gets a call. Uh, we don't know who it's from, but it's from Andrea. Uh, and we get that uh, really great one side of an emergency call. Mm-hmm. Like, wait, 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 what, what, you know, like that's a very realistic thing. If you ever received an emergency call. Yeah. yeah. Um, something's wrong with Brock. They're at the hospital. Yes. Uh, so he rushes to her and, you know, she's, you know, tearful. Her son's on the edge of death. You know, it's like he's got the flu, but it just keeps getting worse. Yes. Um, a nurse comes, keeps him out. He said, no, I'll just be here. You know, mm-hmm. don't, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll be here if you need me. He walks outside to have a cigarette, but he looks in his pack and the rice and cigarette is gone. 
Mm-hmm. Um, he, no, 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 no. Starts ripping his uh, cigarettes apart, leaving, you know, somebody's uh, just a bounty mm-hmm. on the ground. Somebody like a like like a rat is going to make a nest out of that, or that's like a pigeon yeah. fortress uh, <laughs> on the ground of half cigarettes. Yeah. Uh, and then rushes inside to be like, I can't tell you, you know, why I know this, but uh, Brock might have been poisoned with this stuff called ricin. The mm-hmm. doctors will know what it is. I can't tell you what. That's not important right now. I have to go. The most suspicious thing possible, but the only the only action that could result in Brock. Um, yeah, like saving his life. Yeah, you know, as a thing. And this is where I feel like some of the Rube Goldberg machination stuff of Walt ends up getting a little bit implausible during this. It's him knowing, thinking that Jesse would think this mm-hmm. automatically because his points against Jesse are pretty good. Yeah, in this, you know, uh, Walt's sitting at home with his gun uh, until Jesse eventually pounds on the door. Uh, trying to get in. Uh, Walt lets him in, moves the furniture. And Walt, at this point, this is the thing I was referring to earlier uh, in the episode, is that uh, we talked about this. Walt's not a good liar. Nope. Um, Brian Cranston doesn't play him as a good liar. Uh, Brian Cranston did not know what his character had done at the time he did this scene. Yes. Um, he knew the lines and everything, but he did not know that he was meant to be lying mm-hmm. uh, during this. And on one level... I like the end result we got. Yep. You know, with this on the other level, it's like Walt being a shitty liar. Didn't stop anybody from believing him before. Mm-hmm. And it just kind of stands out as the best performance of his lying career. Uh huh. You know, it just, it, it feels weird in retrospect in a way that feels totally natural at the time, because I also didn't know what happened. Right. It, right. It's one of the weirdest beats. I, the scene I think is one of the weirdest beats on rewatch of the show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it does stick out because yeah. he, you know, he delivers his denials here with absolute conviction because Jesse is here, you know, to confront him about the, about yes. the race in. and, you know, Walt, you know, pleads his case as he walks in saying, Oh God, Jesse, you know, just, are you, are you alone? You know, they took me to the desert. They threatened my family. They threatened my, threatened my child. And Jesse is not responding to any of this. Yeah. He doesn't care. He picks up the gun, points it at Walt uh, and says, why did you do it? You know, and Walt goes, oh, like the the DEA search, you know, uh, but Jesse goes, no, not that. You poisoned Brock. I love how Walt goes, who? You know, mm-hmm. he's like, the, Brock, the kid, you saw him last night. Again, that was last night. And Walt is playing dumb. Like, I, I don't know that kid's name. You know, mm-hmm. why would I do that? And they start laying off this this case to each other. Yes. You know, uh, Jesse says, I had the rice and cigarette uh, this morning. Um, you know, I saw Brock last night. He was fine. Huel must have lifted the cigarette. He always says, "Why? When would I have a chance to do this?" He's like, "You mm-hmm. had soul to it. Huel lifted it off of you." It's wild yeah. that he's just right, yeah, about this. Like, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, yeah, fucking he's, super senses. Yeah, is yeah. he, he, he's got it entirely. Not the only instance of super senses in this episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other, I want to talk about that when we get there too, because that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so you know, and Walt makes his case again. Cranston didn't know. It's like, why in God's name would I poison a child? Mm-hmm. Like, that's not what I do. Uh, and Jesse goes, you know, <laughs> to, to, to get back at me, I'm helping Gus. You want to rip my heart out before you, before I'm dead. Yeah. You know, you, you have this vengeance mm-hmm. uh, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Walt is denying it. Uh, they do the thing where somebody's holding a gun to their head and the other person goes, shoot me and grabs the gun and yeah. puts it on their forehead. I couldn't be me. Cause what if they nope. shoot? <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> his fingers on the trigger, right? Yeah. What if just an accident happens at that point? You don't do yeah. that. You're you're yanking the gun away from the person holding it. Like <laughs> it even feels like if they held their hand in a certain way, it would just automatically pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah. You know, to to do that. Uh, yeah. I. This is it's bad advice. Don't do this. <laughs> even if it's to freak out the squares. Yeah. Don't never. You know, yeah. only, Wolverine gets to do it because he won't die. <laughs> but that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh. Uh and you know, Jesse shoves Walt down, you know, gun pointed, pressed at his forehead, right? And just, mm-hmm. you know, admit it. Yeah, I'm gonna kill you, but I need you to admit it to me. And and then we get Walt cackling again, get a little bit of crawl space energy up. It's free, it's roaming. Mm-hmm. Um, and Je- you know, Jesse kicks him saying, Hey, stop, stop, stop laughing. And Walt says, I have been waiting all day for Gus to send one of his men to kill me, and it's you. <laughs> you know, like the ultimate you know, irony and again, twisting the knife Yeah, you know, on him and driving the wedge. Like, who do you know that's, you know, okay with, with using children? Mm-hmm. Uh, and Jesse's like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Only you and I know about the ricin. And Walt says, you don't even believe that. 
there were cameras everywhere. Tyrus could have grabbed the cigarette from your locker. You had it this morning. Mm-hmm. You know, like I haven't seen you. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is this plays into exactly what Gus wants. His last piece of the puzzle. Uh, you he wants to turn you against me, and boy, he's done it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, kill me if you think I'm actually capable of this. You know, yeah. but again, also kind of playing on Jesse's insecurity about not being, you know, part of the Mind Wars Cerebrum edition. Yeah, of, of yeah. this, you know, of of being a, a foot soldier, like mm-hmm. him saying, "Yeah, if you just want to be a tool," and kind of his arc has been like, "I'm not that. I'm actually an important piece of this operation." Yes. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, this is very canny on yes. on Walt here because he knows that the involvement of Brock you know, is the thing that is going to get Jesse to move. He has to reverse it. He has to use Gus's, you know, previous history, you know, with Tomas, right? Yeah. Um, In order to make it appear that the thing he very much did uh, is actually, you know, Gus's action. He uses, you know, Gus's past mistake against him. And it's also, everyone who goes down in this, like, on some level is an architect of their demise. Yeah. You know, in this way, or at least, you know, depending on who they are, like, Hank is because he gets, you know, we talk about this, like Walt is a, an operative of his, of his demise, getting Hank back on the case. Mm-hmm. Um, Hank is an operative of his, his demise by not, you know, leaving well enough alone mm-hmm. when when he finds out and getting, you know, continually like Walt trying to do him like that. Uh, this is Gus doing that, both between his vengeance, like his Hector quest, mm-hmm. and uh, him doing this crapulent thing. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I, I hated all the instant, uh, like instant fail puzzles and Hector quest. Yeah, Hector quest is not well. And the gun has that weird sine wave uh-huh. thing. Like you, you, and you, you get powered down when you get hit. And like, sometimes yeah. if you're in the sewer and Hector, Hector quest, you just can't shoot. Yeah. yeah it goes right past them. Yeah. yeah. It's really frustrating. Terrible. <laughs> um, so Jesse's going to go kill Gus. Uh, and mm-hmm. Walt's like, no, you idiot. You won't even get close to him, you know? And you know, Jesse doesn't care. Like yeah. his guilt at getting Tomas involved in this, this whole thing, fuck it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to do this one way or another, Mr. White. And, and Walt says, let me help. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, and this the, is where the they come to play on. Yep. An epic team up. Yeah. Yes. Marvel team up <laughs> number 38. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so cut forward again. It's the middle of the night and Jesse goes back to the hospital, you know, going back into the ICU and you know, the nurses th- threatened to call security and, you know, the, the, Jesse gave them this information to check for the rice and Andrea doesn't trust him. You know, yeah. she doesn't even look over to him. <laughs> like, why don't you check this rare thing? Only I know. You know, she knows he's involved, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why don't you just, why don't you, you check this thing that like the, the one time it's been used, it was through a, tr- like a, like a Joker umbrella on a Soviet operative. <laughs> it, it, it's, it is uh, this thing that we are in the work that has raised the consciousness of this uh, above, <laughs> above the substrate of, of human uh-huh. knowledge. Like, uh, this is the most famous poison in the world because we're making it the most famous poison in the world as we speak. Yes. Uh, (laughs) I love this scene. Uh, We get a time lapse this morning. You know, Jesse's asleep at the hospital and Tyrus wakes up and is, you know, Tyrus is an asshole. Shoves him, says time to go to work. And Jesse Mm -hmm. goes like, I'm not going to work. I told you I'm not coming. Uh, the batch is going to be ruined. I don't give a shit. And Mm -hmm. I love this, uh, shades again of Hank or not Hank Walt using the public. Perception mm-hmm. against Tyrus. Tyrus is better about not getting himself seen, but mm-hmm. he is not uh, above doing thug shit. Yeah, you know, in in public, that's not a racially charged thing. He is Gus's henchman. Yeah, he's a tough. He's, he's a hired goon. He's a tough. Yeah, yeah. I just I realized like, oh no. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Henchman stuff. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, so Tyrus grabs him, and Jesse again takes the fact that the, you know takes the masquerade as a mm-hmm. shield. Like I don't know this guy. Calls security, and Tyrus immediately leaves. Yeah. yeah. He just jets. <laughs> You know, the, the, this is Jesse, you know, he, he has a motivation, a public motivation. He wants to be close in case anything happens to Brock. Uh, but here, you know, he is also a, very intentionally trying to draw Gus. Yes. Yeah. 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 If your boss wants to talk to me, he can talk to me himself. Yes. Um, we cut over to Walt in Jesse's kitchen making something on the stove. Um, we see these ripped open cold packs and uh, the telltale cap to a pipe bomb. No. Uh, so we know it, it's, a, it's a pipe bomb. And uh, Walt checks his text and says, I think he got his attention. You yes. Know? Uh, so Walt uh, tests out his homemade remote detonator mm-hmm. that he's made. It takes a bunch of tries, but it eventually works. Yeah. His, yeah. Uh, his little ampho bomb there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we get the kind of climax of this, uh, this episode. So like Gus arrives at the hospital, parks his car in the garage. Tyrus, bring, Tyrus brings Jesse to Gus, who's in the hospital chapel here. 
And uh, Gus says, you know, surely you understand it's in your best interest for the cook to go on. Like, I understand Mm -hmm. the boy is sick, but we need this. Um, Is there anything I can do? I'm on the hospital board. I can get the best doctors for Brock. Mm -hmm. Um, I can do all this stuff. And I love, so like, I mean, I'll I'll mention when we get to the end of this, because it watching this again kind of casts new light on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, this similar to how Skyler uh, was putting things together, you know, Gus is making the same expression when Jesse says, you know, Brock isn't sick. He's been mm-hmm. poisoned. I don't, yeah. you know, the doctors aren't going to fix him. I need to be here in case he dies. And you can see the wheels turning in Gus's head as well mm-hmm. uh, during this. He knows something is wrong. Yes. Yeah. This Somebody is, had it, to have done that. It's a very unusual situation. And uh, yeah, like, okay, kid, kid's poisoned. And Gus, thinks that Walt is less than a worm, right? Yes. Gus, he, he doesn't think that Walt would, um, you know, if his child is threatened, uh, yeah. that, that Walt wouldn't he, he literally sink says it. to. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if you make it, Gail was a good person, but if you make it between him and my family, I mean, mm-hmm. I choose my family every time. Like yeah. he literally just told that, that to his face. Yes. You know? Yeah. So Gus takes a breath yep. and says, you know, Jesse, you can stay. Um, and al- almost like ask like ask it like a framing question. Says you know surely the batch is ruined. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Tyrus will dump it, and you can get back to work next week. Let's say. Yep. Right? We'll, we'll stop uh, chasing after sunk cost here. Yes. Uh, Gus, Tyrus, and the driver walk back out to the garage, and Walt has been is watching them with binoculars. Mm-hmm. Uh, there he has the detonator. You know, there you are. There you are. He's going to blow up the car. <laughs> this uh, is him in the, in the uh, hunched over bomb goblin mode. Like, yes, he's bomb. When, when, <laughs> when he when he uh, when, like when he went to go build the pipe bomb, he he put on his brightest green shirt. And yeah, his, his face is still all bandaged up, and he's like, "Come on, I'm gonna." <laughs> like he's talking like uh, like Danny Glover's like character in Saw. Like, he, oh, he's a, he's a dark man villain during yeah. this for some reason. <laughs> like dark man versus the Bob Goblin. <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, but th- this is a very famous scene. Like when we talk about a uh, fan reaction because mm-hmm. Gus gets a view of the car, he stops and you can see him doing the math in his head. Yes. He walks out and looks out and they keep showing us this from his perspective. So we can see that he cannot see Walt. Right. Uh, they continuously do that. Like, you know, you think maybe he saw Walt and that's why he gets cold feet. You can't see it, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and eventually just turns to leave. He, he mm-hmm. skips out and this Walt thought this was his only chance. You know, he he despairs, mm-hmm. uh, missing this chance to blow him up. Um, this has caused no end of like stupid internet essays. Yeah, of, like how did Gus know? And people have asked Giancarlo uh, Esposito this, and he's just like Spidey sense, man, because he's <laughs> he's a funny dude. Because he's <laughs> like, great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's because he knows something's wrong. Yeah, he's just being super cautious. Like I remember the first time I watched this, maybe not putting it completely together and making mm-hmm. it feel a little bit like, oh, this is just an instinct. Yeah, you know, this is yeah. intuition, but it's it's more than that because he he literally has this poison piece mm-hmm. in his head. And he's like, something's wrong. I need to break up my routine. Like, yeah. he's just smarter than that. It's not Spidey sense. This whole thing has been a chess game, right? Yes. And Gus has been a few moves ahead at every time. You know, maybe right now he's fewer moves ahead than he previously had been, but it doesn't yes. take a lot. You know, knowing knowing what we know and knowing what Gus knows to put together that, you know, <laughs> calling a cab is way less of a risk than getting in this car that has been out of my sight for plausibly a half an hour. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it's a – and he's not somebody – he's somebody who does not think anything of um, Walt's morals, mm-hmm. but Walt has outmaneuvered him in chess before. Right mm-hmm. again with the Gale thing. Yeah. Like he doesn't not respect Walt's ability to do this. He's just a careless fuck up mm-hmm. who lets his emotions get in the way. Right. You know, he's he he knows how to play the game. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh they decide, you know, he's like, Well, yeah, game recognize game. Uh, I can't mm-hmm. do this. This is yeah. dumb. Yep. Um it, it ends up being working out really well, even though it ends up being a cinema send thing to infinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's, it to me like I you know, back when I was watching it contemporaneously. I remember thinking like, oh, I like it was not a uh, it like it wasn't even for me like a oh well this is just lazy writing or whatever. It was just it was just a heightening of the stakes, right? Yeah. Like I thought it was basically I was along for the ride. Uh, I just I just thought it was kind of badass. <laughs> it, it's it's very badass. It it's yeah. one of the things that I think on initial glance kind of contributes to the cartoonification 
of Breaking Bad. But now that I've watched it several times and I'm a little bit older, the cartoonification comes from Walt's insane plan that re- revolves around everyone acting exactly how he wants them to. Yes. You know, uh, him, it's not, and the later parts of it where he like, you know, oh, he's going to, he's going to taunt Hector. Stuff like that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Him just saying, Jesse will show up, threaten me, but not kill me. Uh, mm-hmm. For this, and I, this is well, this is what's going to break that, you know, yeah. break the wedge. Um, that still suit feels very Rube Goldberg to me. Yeah, like all he, you know, it was a, it was a gamble on his yeah. part, right? It's like okay, I need to get myself and Jesse in the same room, right? Yeah, yeah. and it, it plays pays off in season five, which you talk about, where like you know, the just because you shot Jesse James doesn't make you Jesse James. Him being good at this part of the game does not mean he's good at the rest of it. You know, and that uh, is what made me ultimately come to peace with season five of this, where before I think I might have had a little bit more time for the argument that like this is the real climax of the show, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's a a popular opinion that like once Gus is gone, the show loses something. I think it's important as a coda um, to to the what had come before. But like, yeah, Yeah. it's uh, watching him be good at this and absolutely fuck up everything else. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, for for all of the idolizing that people did of Walt, still do of Walt, yeah. right? You know, I the there's always the argument, which is like, oh, he never he never thrived because he didn't get a chance to you know to actually do what he wanted to do. He oh was always God. he yeah, was always yeah. under under Skyler's thumb, or you know, he was always um, being held down by Gus and this you know having somebody else over him, right? Getting Walt into a situation where he is entirely unencumbered, even by morality, right? Like yeah. he's he's sailed past pretty much every exit off of off of the you know highway to Monsterdom. Bad choice right? road, so we call yeah. that. Yeah. Yes, uh, I prefer highway to Monsterdom. Uh, uh, they, 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 you know that was actually the alternate episode name for that. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, I think it is very important to show that no Walt, with pretty much everything working in his favor, he 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 still could not make this work. No, no he's 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 uh, there's a lot of luck going on with Walt. The yeah. um the I remember seeing the meme where it's like um you know, breaking bad if there was no Skylar and it just shows everybody having a big party <laughs> and it's just, it's so gross and sexist and dumb. Like yeah, you yeah. didn't watch the fucking show. Like you just saw a lady and you were like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, ooh. it's, it's ooh. funny too. Cause we, in season five, we're going to get Lydia. <laughs> Lydia is a piece of shit. Uh-huh. Like, you're going to hate somebody who's going to fuck everything up. Yeah. Like we, we get a lady Gus. Uh-huh. You know, we, we, we get a, get a worse, crappier, shittier Gus, um, who's actually evil. Like, yeah. Internet guys. <laughs> the worst. Yeah. Weird. Uh. Yeah. Uh, but that's end times. Um, a weird episode that like, this is place sitting and tension racketing, ratcheting, mm-hmm. you know, when you actually recount everything that happens, I kind of remembered more stuff happening in this episode mm-hmm. than, than actually happens. Like it, it takes its time. Um, yes. you know, the scene with, with Skylar going out and having the cigarette, um, you know, the scenes, basically anything we're checking in with the Schraders, mm-hmm. uh, has kind of a, a shaggy non-derogatory feel to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, and I think it is a, <laughs> I think it's a really good, really good play on yeah. their part. Right. And people had to know that Gus wasn't going to die in the next to last episode. Right. No, no. Yeah. It's a, that, that's weirdly a game of Thrones thing. Yeah. You do the actual last episode entirely for setup, but that's not what Breaking Bad does. Nope. Um, yeah. Thanks everybody for listening. Uh, if you have thoughts about season four, now is the time or possibly too late. Possibly the too last, late. Yeah. The last <laughs> time we told you was the time was actually the time. Yeah. Um, if you have anything good, send it in anyway. Maybe we'll put it in at some point. But uh, we collect responses for these during the whole season at duckfeed.tv slash contact. Yeah. If a thought ever occurs to you. Specifically about the season yeah. that we're yeah. talking whoa, about. Whoa there! Uh, <laughs> hey there. Um, Day or night? Uh, yeah. uh, you're gonna want to. You're gonna want to at Cole Ross on Blue Sky if yeah. a thought occurs to you. Please don't. Um, yeah, just go to duckfeed.tv/contact and click the uh, the best quality vacuum button. It'll get yeah. to where it should go. Um, uh, otherwise you can support us by going to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. Get a whole bunch of bonus content and support our operation. Yeah, and uh, join us in thanking our producer, Gwen, 
uh, who also composed the theme song. Thank you, Gwen. Yeah. Uh, and until next time, like, I guess, you know, just wait a week. Two weeks. Yeah. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're enjoying this recap, if you're somehow experiencing this vicariously and haven't seen the show, uh-huh. and you now have to wait two weeks instead of one week like we all had to wait, uh-huh. uh, watch the show. <laughs> you, you got a week. Binge yeah. it. No. Go, go, go ahead. I, you know, we, we did spoil everything for you. So. Yes. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, but, you know, it's okay. Yeah.